Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Today I'm bringing you to Catalonia. We are going to be making Cava, the beautiful sparkling wine from Penedes region. We're going to be foraging for mushrooms. We'll eat gambas, shrimp fresh off the boat from the Mediterranean Sea. I'm also taking you in the kitchens of my favorite restaurants in Catalonia. And I'm going to invite you into my home in Washington, D.C. and show you how to make a warm oysters with Cava dressing. A mimosa with cava and clementine. And a crumble butifarra sausage with mushrooms. Take a look at this and so many more things. I am Jose Andres and this is Made in Spain. Every week I take you to some of my favorite places in my home country of Spain. And we bring the savory flavors of each region into your home. Come start. As a chef, my passion is bringing the culture and flavor of Spain to you in America. Today, we will go to the region of Catalonia, where they make a beautiful wine they call cava. But we start at my home in Washington, D.C. Come, we do some amazing things with cava. Right, we have everything ready to make a very simple cocktail. I'm gonna do a Spanish mimosa with cava, the very, very unique Catalan sparkling wine from the region of Penedes, we're gonna be using Spanish clementines. Are you ready? Great. Beautiful. You know, what we have here is the use, fresh use of clementines. You can do it with, obviously, the use of any other fruit, but with clementines, it's gonna be especially good. Um, you're gonna get a big pot like this one here, and you're gonna drop inside all the juice. And take a look what's gonna happen. Right here, what I have, it's soy lecithin. This is a natural byproduct of soybeans. Soy lecithin has a very unique characteristic. Emulsifies anything. We're gonna put a spoon like this inside. We get a blender. It's better that we put some plastic wrap right here on top to make sure that we don't make a mess around the entire kitchen. And now we're gonna spin the whole thing up. We're gonna see slowly that some bubbles are forming. This is precisely what I mean about we are emulsifying the whole thing. And take a look what happens. Now we have an air of clementines. Why I call it an air? Because it's almost as light as air. You see, so we get the clementine, we take a little bit of the zest, like this. We put the zest inside the glass, smash it against the rim of the glass to get those oils right there. So we put one zest in, the other zest in, and we are ready to pour the cava into the glass. Bubbly, lovely. All right, almost three quarts to the top, like that. Perfect. And now we get the air of clementines and we put it in on top, like this. Beautiful and spectacular. At the end, the mixing is gonna happen in your mouth. But when you drink it, clementine is gonna be clementine and cava is gonna be cava. I don't like it when it's mixed, if you understand what I mean. So why we don't match this cocktail with oysters in a very Spanish way? Let's do it. Take a look, we have hot water right here. And what we're gonna do is to introduce the oysters one by one or two by two 
into the hot water. What's going to happen? That in the moment the oysters kind of touch the hot water, all of a sudden we are kind of uh, cooking them. But the oyster, what's happening? It's saying, oh my god, I'm alive. I'm in a hot water bath. What's happening outside? So they try to take a look at what's happening. In that moment, you take them off. Why? Because you don't want boiled oysters. You only want the oysters to open up enough that will make your life a lot easier to open them up in a second. Only the word three seconds in the water, only until they open up. And now, in a very simple, easy way, the beautiful oyster opens so quick, but if you take a, a look, get, get close, get closer. You see, it, it's like raw. Perfect. So now, put the oysters here. Hey, say hi to your new friend. And I think we can do kind of a sauce dressing, vinagreta, as we call it in Spain, that is going to go so well with those oysters. Very simple. Follow me. Here, what I have is some capers. Spanish capers. So we're going to put the whole capers in this bowl like this. The good thing about this recipe is that you can decide what quantity is the one that you are going to use of each ingredient. You can put more olives, more capers, more shallots, whatever you want. You decide. The recipe is yours from now on. So we're going to put Spanish olives, like this beautiful manzanilla that the only thing you do is chop them up by knife or by the help of a blender. So we get the olives here and we bring them to meet their friend, the capers, like that. And we're going to do the same with chopped shallot, like this. Beautiful. So now we put those chives into this bowl. So here we have this very unique organic olive oil from the denomination of origin Baena, really unique olive oil in the south of Spain. And we're going to make a dressing, the vinagreta, right here. And you know, the proportion, usually the same, three, four parts of olive oil for one part of the acidity that you can achieve by lemon or you can achieve by a very good vinegar. Like this vinegar I'm using here. We are Talking today about Catalonia, we're talking today about Penedès. In Catalonia, you can guess that they have a very good cava vinegar. This is sparkling wine vinegar that is exceptional fresh. And we're going to put also a touch of this vinegar inside this bowl, like this. You know, usually we will need to add some salt, but we are talking that the oyster is very sweet, but at the same time, obviously, very briny. So don't tell me these oysters with the cava vinaigrette don't look great. Really, really unique and so simple. So you know, we've been talking about Catalan cava, this fascinating sparkling wine that I think I want to take you right now to Penedès, the region in Catalonia where they make cava. Beautiful. What really sets Cava apart from every other sparkling wine, it's a very unique liquor that is kept in chestnut barrels and that is added after you take the sediment. This will give further character to, to me, the tastiest sparkling wine available. Hey, it's a good sound, always celebrating. And I think from here, I have to take you right where the grapes for this beautiful wine are grown. Penedès produces great red wines using many different red varieties. But really, Penedès is known around the world as the biggest producer of this beautiful Cava sparkling wine using mainly three varieties, Macabeo, Chabelo, and Parellada. And right here, we are seeing that they are harvesting Parellada, 
the grapes are full, very ripe, very sweet. Mm. Mm. Perfect for the making of the great cava you and I were tasting. You know, I don't think it's many regions around the world like Catalonia that somehow mix modernity and tradition like this region. So I think I'm gonna be taking you to Montserrat. It's a mountain like no other, and where they produce a traditional cheese that is worth the trip. Dios! Here I find a person that knows me since a, a little children. Come estas? Come my dog. Me. My grandfather knew her. What can I tell you? It's great to come back to places that you know almost everyone. Take a look at this. This is the mato. You see how shiny, how fresh. Fresh cheese, no salt, natural. Good English. No salt, just natural. This cheese was made this morning. Meat sugar or meat honey? Typic with honey, yes. Great English. Oh, take a look, the honey mixing with the cheese. I'm showing you so many things around Catalonia, but right now, in this moment, not too far away from these mountains, something very unique is showing up in the forest. I'm gonna show it. El blanco sea blanco. Now I am very close to a little town called Solsona, and we are at the heart of Catalonia, in the province of Lleida. Here, in these mountains, you find a very, very unique treasure. Come esteu, Joan, Ramon, come My friends, Joan and Ramon, these two guys know about these mountains like no one. Hey! Hey! Wow! We found! This one is called Rusignol in Catalan. In English, we call them chanterelles. Oh! Ah, un rubello! Oh, mira! And this one over here, it's called a rubellón. A rubello is probably the national mushroom in Catalonia. It's very meaty, very woody. Take a look. Wow! That one, beautiful. The smell of this wine is astonishing. Grilled garlic and parsley. Oh! I'm gonna say bye to Juan and Ramon. And I'm gonna go to a local restaurant where their speciality is, guess what? Yes, mushrooms. I started cooking in this town when I was a 15-year-old boy, so many of the chefs of every single restaurant in this town very much are people I work with. Who I'm visiting today is a person I almost consider my brother, Kil Marquez, the owner of El Suquet del Almirai, where he does traditional cooking, trying to recreate the seafood dishes that are so popular in Catalonia. I told you, we love mushrooms in Catalonia. This is the perfect example. What goes great with these mushrooms? A traditional Catalan mar y montaña, translated into English as surf and turf. This one, lobster and chicken. You know, I'm finishing this right now, and I'm going back to the kitchen to cook what will be a fairly traditional Catalan dish, right in America. I'm gonna finish this, okay? Kim. I shot like that, buenísimo, too. Well, like that, man. So let me show you now the dish we are gonna do. Inspire in somehow those wonderful dry sausages, the dry embutidos, embutits, as they call it in Catalonia. But this time we're gonna be doing a dish with fresh sausage. 
I grew up eating those all the time. It was like this very unique hot dog. And those butifarras are so nice and so tasty that, you know, you can make them grill or you can do what I'm gonna show you right now. We're gonna do butifarra esparracada. So here we have the oil. We make sure it's hot. And what we're gonna do is use help this sausage to break on its own. So we're gonna cut it like this in pieces, you see? And we're gonna put it into the pan in the moment the oil is hot. And what we wanna start doing is browning the meat to get the caramelization of the meat to make sure that the dish will be really, really tasty. And I think this oil is already hot, so first piece go in. And we're gonna try to make sure that they are somehow separated. It's this way, we don't overcrowd the pan and we'll get a crispier, browner color outside every piece of butifarra. Like this, beautiful. And so as the butifarra starts being cooked and browning in the outside, we're gonna start turning them upside down. And now we're gonna be adding the queen of Spanish cooking, onion. And you know, you can chop it up, you can do whatever cut you like. And we're gonna put some of the onion all around the butifarra, like this. And now we're gonna wait until the onion kind of becomes translucent. Almost like we can see through it. And look at, we start moving the whole thing. You see the onion, it's already nice and caramelized. Already the aromas are all around the kitchen. We need to make sure that everything cooks evenly. And in this moment that the onion already, you can almost see through, I think it's the right moment to add my favorite ingredients. And actually one of the favorite ingredients in Catalonian cooking, mushrooms. And right here I have oyster mushrooms, beautiful oyster mushrooms. And we're gonna add them to the pan to make sure that we keep cooking the ingredients as the meat is almost done. Now it's very important that the pan is really hot. Why? Because we know that mushrooms give away a lot of water. If the pan is not really hot, what is gonna happen is that we're gonna end up having a big swimming pool in the bottom of this pan. And we don't like swimming pools, at least in this technique. We want everything to be as dry as possible because we want everything to get a nice of a brown color as possible. Browner the color, nicer the flavor. In Catalonia, you know, they love dry fruits. And what a better dry fruit than raisins. We have beautiful raisins in Spain. We're gonna get a handful of these and we're gonna add them to the pan, already bringing some nice sweetness to the whole thing. Some more. And also we love other kinds of dry fruits like pine nuts. You find a lot of pine nuts in Catalan cooking. And we are gonna do also a whole bunch of them, all right? Oh, we can do this later. And now, it's very important to give a good aroma to the whole thing. And we're gonna achieve this in a very simple way with fresh herbs. And what a better herb than bay leaf inside. And some thyme, you know, let's say this is very much country food. So if you are walking in the countryside of Catalonia, you will find fresh thyme right in the middle of the mountains. All right, great, beautiful. So now I think we're gonna go for some salt right now. Beautiful, even careful because the sausage, the butifarra already has salt and black pepper, etc. But you know, a touch more will always help, like this. And why not, also black pepper, even if the sausage already has inside. Beautiful. We need something that unites all the ingredients. And in this case, we're gonna be using a moscatel. You know, in Catalonia, as you see, they love sweet things. And what a better thing than adding a touch of sweet moscatel that is gonna unite, once again, all the ingredients. And you see, now we have the evaporation of the alcohol some of the liquid is gonna remain and it's gonna give a very nice extra depth of flavor to the whole thing. And this is very much close to being finished. 
take a look at this, how beautiful. We wait one, two, three, four more seconds until almost this sweet wine reduces completely. And you can see there that the wine is mixing with the olive oil, creating this kind of broken sauce, almost becoming syrupy. That's the moment that that dish is ready. Oh, yeah. It's nothing like the smell of fresh parsley. Okay, my friend, this is over. Let's plate it. Here, we get some of the sausage, some of the thyme, some of the onion, some of the mushrooms. Oh, beautiful. Really beautiful. Take a look at this. Some of the bay leaf out. Let's see if we can add some of the liquid. This sauce you see here is gonna be so concentrated, so deep. And we put the sauce right here around the whole thing. And this dish, this butifarra is already finished. Don't tell me it's not really, really astonishing. So we are cooking in the Catalan way. I think it's time for you and for me to go back to Catalonia right now, but this time not to see mushrooms or butifarra. I want to show you how good the seafood is in Catalonia. Hola! I am in the fishing village of Palamos. And Palamos is located in the Costa Brava, in the northern part of Catalonia, right by the Mediterranean Sea. Wow. But what Palamos is really known for is for a very tiny crustacean called Gamba. It's a red shrimp like no other. Hola, ¿cómo estamos? Bien. Ayuda o qué? Siempre. Oh, take a look at this one. Sí, aquí te. You see the size of this red shrimp? Fascinating. Now let me show you mm. where they take these gambas. All the fish caught will come into this house. This is an auction house. They will separate the different varieties of fish in different trays, different sizes, different qualities. And then a bidding war will begin. Who pays the most is who takes the fish with them to their fish market. <laughs> but what is a great restaurant without a great cook? Not to worry, you are in luck here in Palamos. Next to the seaport is a restaurant called La Gamba. The chef is my friend Juan. Wow. Mmm. This smell is so great. Gracias, Juan. And you know what I love about this is rim. Take a look at the use of this head. Mmm. Qué bueno. Right now, Nathan, I'm taking you to end the day in the best possible way you can end it when you are in Catalonia. Yes? When you are in Catalonia, mainly by the sea, this will be the best way to end a great day. What you see here are friends gathering together around a cremat, a drink made out of rum, and singing a very traditional song called Habanera. If you hear, the rhythm goes with the rhythm of the wave hitting the rocks. I am Jose Andres, and this was Made in Spain. El uno suma el número, número uno, pa' que el primero, pa' que con estar es suficiente para mí. Uno más que no uno menos, sumando, sembrando, pensando en lo que voy a hacer. Uno más, pero con nombre y apellidos, tirando de la cuerda siempre hacia adelante.